Visiting with Aquinas Blue Gold's girls basketball coach, Dave Donarski. Coach, before we get started, just remind us how many years you've been steering the ship there for the Blue Golds. Yeah, so the girls, uh, this will be my ninth year at Aquinas, but I was 10 with the boys prior to that. So going on 19 years with Aquinas High School. Coach, you got the number one team uh, in all the land, according to the coaches. So you got a 20 point per game score. You got three that score in double digits. You're averaging over 70 points per game. Uh, you're at the peak, right? You got everything figured out. Tell me why that's, <laughs> tell me why that's not an accurate statement. Well, I think as any coach would go like with what happened in practice, I don't think we can beat anybody as of yesterday, but, um, we're learning quite a bit about ourselves and kind of what we're good at and what we need to keep getting better at. And yeah, there's, there's, I, I think we have a high ceiling, but there's a lot of work to be done between now and the end of the year. So we've got a decent schedule. I feel like we played a lot of quality opponents which hopefully is preparing us for what we're ideally going to going to set our sights on at the end of this year i mentioned the offensive numbers uh, you've mentioned practice a couple times uh, early season is it is it more focus on the defense or what what exactly are you and the girls working on in the first you know month month and a half of the season sure uh definitely a defensive focus because it really everything kind of predicates off of how good our pressure is and our ability to turn teams over. Uh, and I think that just feeds into what we want to do in transition. And uh, and really, the the refining of our offense doesn't come until probably February. And I hope it refines a little bit because sometimes it's hard to watch when we're in the half court. So we've, we've just, you know, we're it's early in the season. We've been fortunate enough to get some wins. So we're just continuing to try to build on that. Five seniors, according to the roster that was given to me, five seniors on the team this year. I, including uh, your daughter, Macy, tell us about senior leadership on this particular team. Yeah, I think it, it, in years past as well, I think the the better we can be um, really does kind of lie on the, the shoulders of our seniors. And I feel like we have a good, um, not only a good group of players, but really good leadership, character, kids. Um, so practice from an energy level has been great. I feel like they lead us certainly when it comes game time and when it gets a little bit tense, uh, you can kind of rely on that uh, experience level that they have. I mean, a couple of those kids, Macy and, and Shea Barr have, you know, they've played at the state tournament multiple times. So they, they do have that experience and we kind of leverage that as best we can. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Such an advantage with that kind of experience. How have those girls been able to share that experience with the underclassmen on this year's team? I think they really share it by example as much as they do by word. Uh, I feel like, they, and, and this is what you need from your upperclassmen, in my opinion. You know, they their effort level in practice, their understanding of what we're trying to accomplish, and, they, and they're good communicators. And I feel like they're encouraging kids, and uh, and they really kind of push those younger group that that are super talented they just they just don't maybe have the experience level that they have so that's been really really important and I, I i've been proud of kind of how they've stepped up and and really that's a in my opinion a cultural thing when they had that very same thing going on when they were freshmen and sophomores and and had kids in front of them that were helping them along and kind of figure things out so it's good it, it when you have coaches like that on the floor it makes my job a heck of a lot easier so it's great yeah, they only give you so many timeouts in the game. Uh, unlike practice, you can't stop it and uh, go on the floor yeah. and be range. All right, you need those <laughs> those type of leaders out there. Um, we've mentioned the seniors, mentioned a couple of names. Um, who who maybe is another name that, as the season progresses, people that come out and watch your girls play, um, that they should maybe keep a special eye on as the season goes on. Yeah, I think that you know there's several, but you know the the first couple that come to mind, we've got. Um, Maddie Murphy, who played for us last year, she's a junior, very, very talented kid and worked really, really hard in the offseason, played a lot of AAU, did a lot of her own personal training. Um, she's shooting the ball really well from three for us and uh, gives us a, a, a score that really they, they've they got to pay a lot of attention to her. And I feel like we've got compliments around her that can get downhill and attack the rim. So either they're going to play her up and, and not allow her to get open looks or they got to stop the penetration, which gives her opportunities. And then the second kid really that comes to mind, Samantha Davis, uh, sister of Johnny and Jordan Davis, who played for the Badgers. And uh, she's incredibly athletic and uh, just talk about a kid who has a really, really high ceiling. I mean, she's hitting shots in games and practices that, you know, we haven't seen in quite a while. So I feel like she's going to be a really fun kid to watch develop. And, and she's in a perfect situation. She's a freshman who gets a lot of time and, uh, and she's got seniors around her that can kind of help her 
learn and grow as she goes through this season. So I'm, I'm expecting her to continue to get better and better as we move along. That's and then true. there's, a, there's a host of, there's a host of other kids that are great complimentary players to that. So Barch and it's Lova is a foreign exchange student. She's, this is her second year. She's a college level player. She's done a really, really nice job for us. Alexa Neumeister, 4.0 student knows everything that we're trying to do on the floor. So you get, you get kids like that, you know, around some others and it just, it's, it's a really good mix. As we get ready to turn the calendar to 2023 conference season, uh, makes up most of the schedule, uh, Mississippi Valley Conference, help us handicap your conference and where you fit in it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, we should certainly be a front runner in that, I would hope. Um, you know, you got Lacrosse Logan and Lacrosse Central are two, you know, not only are they crosstown rivals of ours, but they're a really talented group and they play a pretty tough schedule in the, in the um, outside of conference. So I feel like those will give us a good run. And, and on Alaska has always been a team that, you know, we've, I don't want to say struggled with, we've been fortunate enough to beat them, but um, we've had some really, really good games in the past. Uh, I think what helps us the most is that we, we get, really really i mean they 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 give us their best shot with everything they have nobody knows you better than your conference team so i think that's really important um and you really we're we're coming up on it we play prairie du chien on thursday i was expecting them to be down and they're not um really well disciplined really well coached sometimes you go to games and you're like boy i wish we could do this that or the other thing so um they're one of those teams. So we have those coming, those, them coming up on Thursday. And then we play Lakeland and Lake Mills uh, just after Christmas. So we're going to get tested a lot in the next three games. So I'm hoping that we can be ready for that. Coach, as we wrap up here, um, I think it's important to uh, tell people to, that, that you got to get to the gym and you got to support your local high school student athletes. It wasn't that long ago we were telling people to stay out of the gym. So um, I'll just kind of leave you with, with that and, and advertise uh, to the folks around your community that it's important to come and support these girls in person uh, and come and cheer them on. Yeah. Thank you for the uh, forum to do that. Uh, and I feel like what, um, what we've tried to do, cause you know, having two daughters of my own, I went through those painful times of watching girls basketball when it was relatively slow paced and, uh, and not a lot of scoring. And I feel like we we've done our part in trying at least locally to, to speed the games up, to put a lot more pressure on it, to score the ball a lot more. And I feel like if, if we can get people in the gym and see kind of how these kids have developed, you know, they're shooting floaters, step backs, you know, they're getting to the rim and, 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 tough Euro finishes like the games evolved a great deal in my opinion in the last 10 years on the girls side of it but it's it's the stigma around it and we've went and scouted some games that are like oh my gosh this sets the game back 10 years I hope that's not what we're doing out there I hope that we're putting out a decent product and our kids their energy level and their effort to compete it's as good as anything you'll find so I, I'm hoping that that will garner some people wanting to go take a leander at you know kind of what's going on with girls basketball locally. Aquinas Blue Golds girls basketball coach Dave Donarski. Best of luck this season. Appreciate that. Thanks again for having me.